All right, we are finished everything other than the lines going to the house. So that's the three double lot for the off grid and the one double lot for the uh, on grid grid type. Again, the one lot are going to be going in here. They can go direct. Uh, I got to apply the no ox and then stick them in there. Uh, the three double will be going in here through a DIN combiner that will convert the three odd down to a one odd, and then that'll come over and go in here. Uh, again, no ox on there. Uh, there'll be ring terminals going into the box, ring terminals coming out of the box to connect that up. <clears throat> Everything's been torqued and then marked. Again, when you install something and you torque it, mark it and then go to the next bolt. Don't go and just go, oh, I torqued all these, and then, you know, go ahead and mark them all, because you may miss one and jump over one unintentionally. We all do it, and uh, you miss one of the torque settings, and that's bad. So, uh, making sure that you do things one at a time. Um, it's been all day. It's been six hours of working on the red cables. <laughs> These things are so stiff. Anyway, you've seen my other stuff. I'm not going to keep uh, reaping on that thing. Um, so the reds are the positives. They all come from the disconnects. My disconnects are organized for the charge controllers to be uh, the charge controller one going out. So uh, then number two and number three. So it's just simple. Makes sense. Charge controller one, two, three will be on the label. And then inverter one, two, three. Um, uh, I don't know if it shows a grid on the on the stickers or not. I'm not sure if it'll be grid and then off-grid, off-grid. But I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. We can make our own labels if we wanted to. I I personally would like to have names to them because someone else wouldn't know that inverter one is the grid inverter, essentially. And they wouldn't know that this battery connect is the one specifically for that. They would know this is inverter one, but they wouldn't know that is the grid tide. Um, <clears throat> likewise on the front panel, that's right here. This guy's going to be up there like that. It came like this, which is unfortunate. I'd rather have them not knock anything out and let us do the knockouts. Um, I, I understand they're helping people out by getting them pre-set up. They get wires pre-wired, all zips tied to the sides. It's, it's nice. It's really, really good. Um, but... If we want to do a different layout, it wouldn't have been the same. So, of course, inverter one in is grid. So that would signify if I have this labeled as inverter one, you'd have, you know, that inverter one is grid inverter. And then um, uh, inverter one out, AC load. I don't have that. I don't have an AC load out. So again, I wish I didn't, they wish they didn't put stickers on there because these two are my grid bypass right here. Um, and then these are my AC outs right here. So now I have to go and rip these stickers off and re-change re it, turn off both to disconnect the AC output. Yeah, so that's already done, but whatever, that's part of relabeling. Um, so yeah, as in previous videos, you've seen everything other than the positive being in, uh, in, in place. So when I undo this, this would just sit there. And if anything, I'd actually have to pull it down. And when it pulls down, it doesn't want to spring back or side side or forward. It actually wants to push back up. So it's keeping the wires themselves are helping themselves stay up. That's the only benefit of the RW90 Super Stiff Horrible 7 strand cable is that it keep it really puts itself in position to want to stay there. Um, so all those went through these grommets. Um, not overly impressive you they only like to be fed wire through in this direction um if i could feel in there and you, if I, could, I don't know how to explain that more but if i feel in it's super smooth going that way but on this side if you try to push that way the edge is sharp and the idea is that these are supposed to be smooth and clean and all that so there's just like little catch marks on the on the thing when you're trying to adjust your cables in and out it does not want to go that way on all of these so I, after doing this one i realized as i was fighting with number two i'm like wait a second so i took out trying to get through here and this one which of course had too much cable didn't know what length i needed exactly so i had like all that extra red cable 
on the third inverter. So I had like two and a half or three meters of extra cable as I was running it through and positioning it. Um, I could have held it out here, but even, and then I kind of went, okay, it's going to be about there. And, you know, knowing that the crimp ring is one inch below to where it meets up to the, to the stud, to where the wire should be maxing out into the crimp. Um, so, you know, I'd measure up from this one up nine and a half inches to the actual stud, take off an inch, and that's where my wire would end in the crimp. So that gave me my vertical height. And then I mark on here, there's a black mark there. You can see that's where I'd be going in or through the grommet, and that's where I'd know to make my bend. So that put me up into the right position for inverter number three right here. Oh my goodness, roosters. Um, so yeah, that, but again, so much wire, it was really hard to work with it. Um, all in all, now my, my bottom trays are gonna sit down here. Uh, my isolation's done here. They don't give fer uh, ferrets, ferrets, I how they actually say it, for the uh, Zen bus. Um, they give them for the for the inverters. They came with the inverters. They did not come with the charge controllers. And I don't know if the charge controllers should have them or shouldn't have them. They're not inverting. They're just converting the DC from high voltage down. These are inverting. There might be a high frequency effect and that's what these will help block and then on the charge controller they get the high frequency protection with their ferrite um, and it cleans up the uh, signal so you don't get any interference on that line right like that um, so yeah they just go on over both cables as you come in and away you go so um, working this area if anybody's working on one of these and you're trying to bolt up your bottom rings or onto your bottom bolt, undo your top bolts, get the get your top wires out of the way, of course. Whatever way you line them up, you're gonna fight with the other cables. So I started with the top cables and then I left them on and I was trying to get my bolts, my nuts on the bolts, oh, total nightmare. So then I clued in, take these off, loosen them up, tuck them in behind here. And then I had total room to reach up in there. And honestly, I should have had my, my cables here hanging out. But again, I needed to know where these were going to run because these are way harder to work with than these. So I left these in place instead of pulling them all the way back down and having them hang down there. Um, so I knew where to root these guys, all the reds and all the blacks, in avoidance of my, my uh, aluminums. So it worked out well. It's just... Everything is so hard to bend. Once it's in this position, you can't really bend it in here. You really have to pull it back a little bit and fight with it. It's, um, yeah, so if you have weak thumbs, you're going to really struggle. Um, then through the 50-pound uh, zip tie, I went through this earlier on another video just to secure this up out of the way so this wouldn't drop and stuff. And then went through and, you know, always leave a nice little bit of slack so nothing's too... I'm not pulling on this. I know it looks like it, but it's actually pretty loose there. Uh, this one's zip tied up. My neutrals are zip tied up and all the way along. Again, I only have two neutrals because only the load outputs get the neutrals. The, the uh, grid tie does not. It only runs the 120, 240. Um, and then, uh, yeah, all the way down. i just working in behind here. It's a little bit challenging. And then uh, coming up under here, this got way easier, thank goodness. These guys all just put all the zip ties on. And now of course, if you can, if anybody has cable tie, zip ties, uh, knowledge, with the tail that's left on, if you clip it off to about, you know, just a side cutter it, leave about a three quarter inch, half inch, and then you grab a lineman's pliers and you just twist um, the tail as it's sticking out the box. And it'll just kind of snap off and leave no sharp edge. But these big, these these cable ties, they're way too strong. It, it it didn't twist off nice, so it still left a sharp edge. So what I did is I folded, I just rolled these all the way back so my box is sitting at the back of the uh, frame because there is a, a small sharp edge on each one of these tabs. And, you know, that they suck when you rip your hand open reaching into a, a system. Now there is a nice tool that you can get on there. It pulls the tension and then it clips the wire as well. Um, 
Yeah, the cheapest one out there is nineteen dollars. I, I could have got it; it would have been great. But I don't do a lot of cable tie work, so that one I knew I could just lay them up against the back wall. If somebody's reaching in and they're cutting themselves, put put your fingers back there. So um, yeah, just keeping it safe and clean. Everything's up out of the way. Keeping my high my 120 volts away from my conduit uh, channel for the Zan bus. Keep that as clean as you can. You'll get the best communication. Um, not sure where, how I'm going to run my neutrals. I think I'm going to just ground them out right. Oh, sorry, neutral. These are my grounds. Um, I think I'm going to ground them out right here. I'm not going to try to root them up and have them bypass this. Just in the future, I know I'm know i going to be zip tied. I could have it in the back corner. I don't want to be running a neutral across any potential power point. And then coming up and grounding here. Anyway, it's the same thing. Um, but I'm not doing those yet. Those will be my very last thing once I get confirmation what my electrician wants to see. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my throat's getting raspy. Uh, but yeah, regardless, I'll uh, just probably come up and loop it up and over and come back down so that I have some extra. I'm not a fan of just cutting it here and just poking it in and it, all you've got is two inches. If you ever have to change anything, you're totally looped. Um, you'd have to then extend it or whatever, and that sucks. So I'm not cutting those yet. If you want some up there, fine. If I, I just think it's going to be down here because it's all grounded the same. Um, what else can I go through? Yeah, that's it. There's those caps. I left them off because they, they, they start to crack and break. If you keep pulling them on and off, I should have just never even taken them out of the bag until this was all finished and said and done. And um, strain on this is nothing, so not working that too hard. Um, yeah, so I have nothing else for you guys. Oh, I'm going to be doing duck seal. Uh, that pasty gooby stuff. Um, uh, it's gonna make noise if I get it. It's a, it's a very thick, heavy gray goop. It's like silly putty, really. Once the everything's in line and stuff, we're gonna be stuffing it in there. And that's gonna seal all that up so you don't get, you know, underground gases and stuff. It's, it's They say you don't want that to open because these two have just the leg going down, covering the tech cable, where the PV lines, I did, I am going to duck seal those as well. Push that goop in there. But those are sealed all the way up to the weather head at the top of the solar array at the other end. So very unlikely gases and stuff. But hey, that's what they recommend doing. So I'll stuff some silly putty in there. Um, yeah. Other than this, I need to get out to the array and create my extensions from the for the negative end to the center post down through the weather head down to the disconnect and then as well as the positive from that end over to the center for each one of the three arrays i might start that now but i am hungry um what else yeah that's finished all the the wire management is done actually one of my sons was three of my sons kind of got the center uh, finished we ran out of clips so i had to order more in <clears throat> excuse me uh got 100 the first time and bought 200 the second time just buy buy a gob gob of them i was trying to be cost effective and honestly doing this type of stuff it's uh, cost effective isn't always the best um it's just expensive to build a solar system it's you, you kind of have to come to terms with it being a little bit of price um, finding a decent price on the clips, you can spend $100 for 50 or you can spend, you know, $20 for 100 It's It's quite variable. Um, that's our management. I personally think that's going to be wonderful because there's no loops. They, they say you never want to have loops. Uh, one of the gentlemen I watched learned a lot from, fantastic, uh, very knowledgeable. He said the loops don't create really any, any interference at this voltage range. So I could have left loops and just had them strung up and all that stuff. But again, I like a clean install. So we got all of those guys done up like that. Uh, they're all just sitting together and they're not connected yet. Because uh, of course, when you start connecting, you start multiplying your, uh, your power factor. 
of the 41 volts nominal. If you put two together, now you have 82 volts. And another one on, you got 123 volts. And you know, they'll end up all 10, you got 410 volts sitting at the, the negative and the positive. Granted, they're not gonna come together. So it's, it's just, you just don't connect them until you're ready to power all the system up. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So I hope you guys have learned you know learned as i learned as i go if you got some value out of it fantastic and uh any comments any thoughts if you see something i did that's really dangerous or stupid i don't think so because the years of research should have given me um uh, no words safety trebuchet my son built my eldest son built that about five years ago it actually throws a watermelon about 40 feet pretty cool um mm, these are all sealed up got our ground back it's so nice to see this stuff come done uh we went with a light gray silicone and uh yeah so that's all tightened up that's all these ones are really hard they're so close together so my wife is very good at this but that was a real jerk she was not happy with her her results but i was quite impressed because i would <laughs> we would have been dis disgusting um yeah so those are all sealed up so then she got our air intake for inside uh all sealed up as well uh yeah every little aspect it all just takes a lot of time there's just there's so many things that you need to do when you have a team of people four or five on a crew it's really fast work when you're doing yourself it just takes days so all right, guys. Have a great day.